Good evening, good evening, good evening, and thank you for joining us for yet another Bible study here at MOMBC. Let us pray, Father. We thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace toward us. We thank you, God, for our opportunity that we have to study your word. We pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would open up our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that we shall receive everything you have for us. We love you and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I am so looking forward to tonight and how we are getting ready. We're still talking about God's people offer praise. The last a couple of weeks we dealt uh, with, the last few weeks actually, um, we talked about, you know, song and how uh, Moses sang a song before the people in the Old Testament. Then Miriam took the women out and they danced before the Lord. And then we transitioned over and still talking about dancing and dealing with David and how he brought the Ark of the Covenant back to where it was supposed to be. And now uh, this type of praise is a different type of praise. Um, it focuses, uh, turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 10, pray the Lord. Let's just get into it. Amen. Mark chapter 10 is where we want to go tonight. And we want to deal, and I mentioned uh, this past Sunday, and I believe last week, I mentioned that we will talk about uh, blind Bartimaeus. My blind Bartimaeus or Maeus. Um, many believe, and as we're talking about blind Bartimaeus, let's, let's look at the context of the fact that at the end of the day, blindness was a familiar condition in the ancient world. The Bible itself uses some form of the word blind dozens of times, okay? An Egyptian medical text of about 1500 BC identifies various diseases of the eyes and suggests numerous remedies. Those take the form of potions, ingredients of which are uh, decidedly not prescribed today. You know how you, you know back in the day they had potions and, and things of that nature, and today uh, you know it can't be prescribed because it's like now it, it it might kill you. It is deadly. It is it, it's against the law to use those type of things. And so Egyptian physicians were advised to paint the mixture on the eyes of a patient using a bird's feather. You use a bird's feather things of that nature. As with many supposed remedies, healing may have occurred in spite of the treatment and therefore given the impression that it was effective. But from our current vantage point, there was no reliable cure for blindness in Jesus' day and little understanding of his causes. For this reason, Many believe that blindness was a curse from God for some type of sinful behavior. Before I tell you the next part of that, uh, we, you know, those of you that have been able to join us over the last year, really, we talked about it before, and I've, I've mentioned it before, how sins were uh, considered, you know, if you were, uh, if you were sick, if you had leprosy, we talked about leprosy one time, and I, I mentioned to you the fact that if you had leprosy, it was considered a sin. It, you, you did something wrong. Job's friends, the story of Job. Job had everything taken away from him, and his friends were convinced. Job, what in the world did you do to God? You must have done something wrong. That's why God punishing you. Because in Jesus' day, and some way in today, what you uh, if you must have been, done something wrong towards God or to have upset God, and that's why you receive a this punishment. In this case, blindness. So the next part of this is the sins of the parents were thought to affect their children 
causing them to be born blind. So if a person was born blind, it's like, well, Lord, whose fault was it? Was it his fault? You know, what, the, whose fault was it that this man is born blind or this woman is born blind? So as uh, in all cases, blindness was not only uh, economically debilitated, but it was also socially debilitated because, uh, excuse me, blind men could not serve as priests. Those afflicted with blindness had little opportunity for employment and were reduced to begging or dependent on family support to survive. Okay, so although uh, the Jewish law forbade taking advantage of the blind, no amount of legal protection could restore sight. Even though uh, you, I'm not supposed to be taken advantage of, I still have it. I still have blindness. And so I, I still can't see. And so socially, emotionally, it's debilitating because I'm, I'm still in a state that I've got to depend on other folks. Okay, so Mark talks about, uh, you, yep, in essence, Mark is asking the question, have you read about Jesus this far and still don't see who he is? or understand the spiritual lessons he is teaching, okay? I, I, I'm going to praise, uh, and before I get to the praise, let's deal with this story, okay? Mark chapter 10, verse number 46, okay? Jericho is an important place. Excuse me. The Bible says, verse 46, Mark chapter 10, Christian Standard Bible they came to Jericho, important place. They came to this city. They came to Jericho, okay? And as he was leaving Jericho with the disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, not only was he blind and it was physically debilitated, now it's economically debilitated, and socially, because look what the Bible does here. It equates, excuse me, it just go put it out there, a blind beggar. Lord, have mercy. That, that's something you got to be attributed to what you have to do for a living. A blind beggar was sitting by the road. Blind beggar, okay? High traffic area, ideal for someone who was begging, because people were going to be coming that particular way. And because, excuse me, Jesus was making uh, his way from Jericho to Jerusalem, there was a great number of people there, this large crowd, because they were making the annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So there were some that were intentionally going with Jesus, and there were others, they were just going along for the walk. They were going along, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going because I'm going to Jerusalem. Not so much because I'm, you know, I want to go with Jesus, but because Jesus is going, let me just, you know, be in the crowd or what have you. So there's this large crowd. Now, this is going to be important. This large crowd that was with him, Bartimaeus is sitting on the side of the road. I want you to, to make sure you pay attention to those two things, large crowd and city. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, is city. Now, the bar is Arabic for son of. For instance, when we uh, Barnabas, that's found in Acts uh, chapter four, son of consolation, okay? So, one Bible concordance translate the word Bartimaeus as son of the unclean. He was son of the unclean. But right here, Mark is clarifying that his father's name was Timaeus. And that has nothing to do with being unclean. As a matter of fact, the word is closely related to the concept of honor. So Bartimaeus Although folks have tried to say his name meant son of the unclean, that's why he was unclean, that's why he was blind and all of that. 
No, his father's name is Timaeus. And so it may not necessarily mean son of the unclean. It, it basically, he's son of actually someone with honor. Okay? So, large crowd, Bartimaeus is sick. Verse number 47, blind man, he's sick. By, he ain't so, socially, he's not supposed to have a status. Okay? Socially, he's not supposed to have a status. He, he, he's not supposed to be uh, with, he's not supposed to be a part of the crowd. Okay? Verse number 47, when he heard, in case you see, that it was Jesus of Nazareth. Now that's important. He, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, the name Jesus was actually a common name during those days. Okay, you know how uh, the name Ashley is common during a, a, a particular uh, uh, decade or, or what have you. I, I have a coworker. Her name is Latoya. And she said, you already know that I was born in the 80s because all Latoya's come from the 80s, you know, the Latoya Jackson and things of that. So you know that I was born in the 80s. It identifies me with where I was born. And so, you know, uh, the Latinos, they use the name Jesus. That's a common name for them, depending on the age group. That's a common name, Jesus. And so the name Jesus, Jesus, was a common name. But because Mark said this was Jesus of Nazareth, that the blind beggar, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, it identifies that ain't, this ain't just my cousin Jesus. That this ain't just no ordinary Jesus. Now, this is the one. This is the one who is a healer. This is the one that can get some stuff done. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So when Brother May said, well, I, I, I heard Jesus. There was another Jesus that came through here about last week. Now, he ain't important. Hold up. Y'all said Jesus of Nazareth come by? Hold up. Hold up. That, that, that makes me respond different. Oh, Lord. That, that, thank you, Holy Spirit. That just hit me. When you hear Jesus' name, it ought to make you respond differently. When you, when you hear the Son of God's name, Jesus, your Lord, is when you hear that name, that, that, that's why the late Rance Allen used to uh, say, it's something about the name of Jesus. Y'all remember, he used to say, <laughs> something about the name of Jesus. It is the sweetest. Come on, this is my, I got to go, I got to go. Come on here, y'all. Verse number 47, when he began when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he responded differently. He began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He said, I, I heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, and now I'm going to identify you with your family lineage, son of David, David being the king at that particular time. Yeah. Hold on. I want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, excuse me. I, uh, so I, I've got to attribute you to the fact. I want you to know that I know who you are. I know the power that you have. Because if this Jesus of Nazareth, this is the one that came from the family lineage of David. I have, I know who that is. I, I, I recognize who that is. It's important that folks recognize who, it, it, it's important that folks that don't know Christ, okay, listen to me very carefully what I'm about to say. It's important that folks that don't know Christ, that don't, don't have a relationship with him, don't outbeat you in your relationship with Christ. God, to be more careful. I got to say that again. Folks that don't have a relationship with Christ, make sure that they don't outbeat you in your relationship with Christ. 
It ought that it is a sad day when the folks that don't have a relationship with Christ can recognize power that comes from Christ. Well, I may not acknowledge you, but I acknowledge that you know that that's that Jesus that y'all believe in. And you over here talking about so well, I you know, I don't know, Lord, if you're gonna be able to do it. Whoa, 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 wait. If folks that don't have a relationship can identify who Christ is, surely we ought to be the cheerleaders of Christ. We ought not to be silent. God. See, uh, Dr. Tony Evans would say secret, undercover, secret agent Christian. We ought to be displaying to the world, not putting on a performance, but letting our good works be seen. Letting folks know, I serve a risen Savior who's in this world today that is alive. He's big. He is well. And no, 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 no. You not go out beat me on my relationship with Christ. You not, no, I, I believe in him. I want you to believe in him, but I'm not going to go around doubting. No, no, no. I know who he is. I know where he came from. And so Bartimaeus understood, uh, he understood who this Jesus was. And then he said, have mercy on me. Have pity on me. On me, I, I, I just want you to, to, to teach, have a little pity on my little old soul. Okay, verse number forty-eight. He said, "Begin to cry, out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me." Verse forty-eight. Many warned. Hold on, let me make sure I'm not skipping over a part. Okay, yeah. Uh, Many warned him to keep quiet, but he was crying out all the more. Have mercy on me, son of David. He didn't say Jesus. He said, have mercy on me, son of David. Okay. He identified with who he was. He said, I, I, look, y'all don't need nothing. I need something. If y'all don't need nothing, y'all stay there. I, you know, uh, pre COVID nineteen, you would go to churches and things of that nature, and and uh, uh, the, the, the presider or maybe the praise and worship leader, they may uh, they may have said something to the effect of, "If Lord hasn't done anything for you, stay seated. If the Lord has not, if the Lord has not done anything for you, don't clap your hands, don't don't shout, don't uh, don't don't raise your voice, don't give God a prayer. If He ain't done nothing for you, don't do any of that. But if He's done something for you, and it, it is it's really an oxymoron because God has done something for every last one of us. If we are alive. He's done something for us. Come on here now. And so at the end of the day, you, you ought to uh, express louder, even harder, your relationship with Christ. Remember, with Jesus, remember we talked about with uh, David. David said, look, you and, and we didn't get into this, with, uh, but I stopped on the fact that his, uh, his wife, Macau, she was... Uh, she despised David in her heart. Okay? She despised David in her heart. And because she and and because she despised you, you ought not be doing all that. And David said, okay, you think this undignified, I will become even more undignified than this. Because at the end of the day, we're bringing the Ark of the Covenant back. We're bringing God back to the city. Baby, I, I, you know, he, he ain't nothing. Maybe he ain't done nothing for you. But for me, he done too much for me to sit quiet and act like he ain't done nothing. And so, blind Bartimaeus cries out even the more. They try to hush him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at him. Look at him. Look, look, look at him. You, you, you being too rude. You being too aggressive. You, you being socially in it and don't take all that. You, you, it, it don't take all that yelling and, and it, that's just embarrassing. You have to be shaming yourself, embarrassing yourself. And you already begging for stuff. And then you go sit over here and start yelling God's name. You have to, what is wrong with you? That, that's how some folks look at folks that are in church that are giving God a prayer. They're like, oh, what is wrong with that person? Why are they doing? What, 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 why are they so loud? Why, why are they moving so much? Why, why are they dancing? You don't understand my story. You definitely.
rightly can't understand my prayer. You don't understand the pain that I have endured. You can't understand this praise that I offer up unto God. You, you, baby, I uh, look, baby, he ain't done nothing for you, but for me, he's done enough. And, and, and if he hasn't done anything, Bartimaeus understood this man right here. Y'all don't even re realize the power that y'all walking with. This man could do some stuff. And because he can, I need him to have mercy on me. I need him to come and see about me. Come on here now. Okay? He yelled even louder, shouted directly at Jesus. He didn't change his plea. He repeated exactly what he had already been shouting. And though he had never been interrupted. Verse number 49, Mark chapter 10, 49. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man. He, Jesus said, so, okay, call, call him. Call, call that man right there. Jesus, stop. Call him over here. So they, the same people that tried to hush him up, are now the same people that are having to do what Jesus told them to do. Ooh. Y'all basically got reprimanded by God. Mm. Dang. Ooh, that's messed up. You know, G, basically, Jesus tell you, what do y'all know? Hush up. Tell, tell that boy to come over here. Call him. Call, call him. You, 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 now you change your, you change your tone. You change your attitude. You, you change what you're doing now because you realize that, that that's what happens to our children. If one of them says, well, mommy says such and such and such, I don't know why it ain't hit them yet. Maybe because they're just still children. I'm, I'm going to attribute it to that. That they don't realize that I'm going to go back and ask Bobby, did you say X, Y, and Z? Well, if, if, if she confirms what was said, then they're off the hook. But if she doesn't confirm what they said, then it's like, well, I thought, I just, oh, no, now, now you're changing your tune, huh? Because you knew, I don't know what made you think I won't go, go back and ask her. Yeah, I'm going to go back and ask her because I know how y'all do. And so in the same way, he Jesus stopped and said, call him. Yeah, I, look, I know y'all try to hush him up, but call him. And so they said, oh, 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 oh sorry, Jesus. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, 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 by the base. By, by the base. They said to the blind man, have, have courage. And, and, and uh, Christian, uh, excuse me, have courage is in the Christian standard by the King James. It says, uh, be of good comfort. Okay? They say, look, have courage. Okay? The, Jesus wants you. Get up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Get up. Won't he already up? No. Oh man, I, I man, I was I was ready to get to this particular part right here. In the, in the King James version, it says "rise," okay, because Bartimaeus is in a seated or prone position as a beggar. He he can't stand up, you know, the way he can, but he's not standing up on his own. He's sitting down because he's begging. He's on the he's on the highway side, okay. Now, why is this rising? This getting up important? Remember, I said in verse number forty. Uh, seven, excuse me, 46, large crowd, and he was sitting on the side of the road. I want you to know what happens. The Bible says in verse number 48, that when they were trying to hush him up, he got louder. He cried out all the more, had mercy so the David. Basically, those of you that, that watched uh, Sunday's message two weeks ago, I believe it was, I mentioned the fact that basically what that meant is Bartimaeus was sitting on the floor, okay? For the purposes of this demonstration, he was sitting on the floor. He was sitting on the ground. Lord, you cry. Now, y'all know how it is when you're trying to yell through a crowd, it gets all mixed up in the noise and all of that type of stuff. Bartimaeus was a loud brother. If Jesus heard this one man sitting on the road, and, and when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then when they tried to husband, be quiet. Shh, shh. He was still sitting and had to project his voice from a sitting position 
over the crowd, through the crowd, so that Jesus could hear him. So basically, he had to let yell even louder from a sitting position. Sonny David, have mercy on me. I, I, I'm trying to get his attention. I'm, I'm trying to get something from the Lord. Oh my gosh, Lord have mercy. I, 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 I just... And it bought no something else I need to tell you. When you are trying to get something from the Lord, you can't just do what you ordinarily do. If you all, if you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you've always gotten. So if you haven't gotten the blessing yet, if you haven't gotten the deliverance yet, maybe maybe you need to change your method. Maybe you need to change what you're doing. Maybe you need to stop just praying one time and then leaving it alone. No, 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 no. I'm going to need you to keep pushing until something happens. I'm going to need you to keep praying. I'm going to need you to keep believing. Why? Because at the end of the day, I need something from God. I can't just do a one-time, what it does thing. No, I need God. And Bartimaeus said, I need Jesus like I've never needed him before. Y'all may not need him, but I need him. Okay, so he was in a seated position through a large crowd. He's yelling all the that Jesus can hear you. Oh my gosh, that is powerful. That is simply amazing. Okay, verse 40. I'm still at verse 49. They said, Have courage, get up. He's calling for you. Okay, he, he's calling. He, he, hey, Jesus said, Come on. Okay, uh. Yeah, he called to you. Verse 50, he threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Okay? What he was sitting on was his coat, his outer garment. Okay? It was probably the most valuable possession that he had. Why? Because as people are passing by, they're dropping their money on that coat. He's sitting there. He's got his coat laid. He's sitting on his coat. He's got his coat laid out. So when you come by, you can just drop your money on the coat. And so he probably had money on this coat. He probably had, you know, collection of all the money he had received that day, that week. I don't know how long, but he had money sitting on that coat. When he, when they told him that Jesus called him, they said, be of good comfort. They said, have courage. Get up. Rise, boy. Get up. Jesus calling you. He said, come on over here. He, Bartimaeus didn't waste no time. He said, forget the coat. Forget what I've already collected. I'm going to get something more than what I collected. <laughs> when you understand that you can get more from Jesus than what you already have, that should cause you to open up your hands a little bit more because you can't receive anything with a closed fist. But when you open up your hands, God can not only allow stuff to come out of your hand, but he can allow stuff to come into your hand. Woo! Lord Jesus, y'all, I'm, I'm about to literally take the text and just start preaching, just slam preaching. No, but I can't do that. So, so it was his prized possession. He threw the coat off. He said, forget this. I, Jesus calling me, I'm going to get something more when I get to Jesus, okay? Jumped up, came to Jesus. His faith showed that I trusted in Jesus all the more, okay? Verse 51, then Jesus answered him, this is funny to me, what do you want me to do for you, okay? Jesus, that is a symbol. Yeah. Okay, Jesus' question was not posed from the lack of knowledge. Jesus, don't you see the man blind? What were you asking that dumb question for? What, why did you Why did you ask him what he wanted? He up here calling you, talking about some Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, and then you go, the man get up here, and then you go ask him what he wants? Duh, Jesus, he wants to see. But Jesus needed to hear Bartimaeus say that he wanted. He needed him to verbalize his need and his faith. Because a lot of times what happened, Jesus knows what you need. The problem is 
We're not willing to verbalize what we need because of our own shame, because of our own pride, because well, I don't really need that from the Lord. But, but because you know, I, I got to have it. I don't need anything. I don't need no. But I don't want it to be a handout. I, you know, the, uh, but folks try to give you something. That, no, 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 that's all right. I, I'm good. No, no, no. I'm not trying to give you a handout. This ain't no charity case. I'm trying to get blessed. And if you don't receive my blessing, it not only mess up you, but it mess up me because I'm the one that's being the blesser. Come on here now. And so Jesus was not foolish to what Bartimaeus needed. He needed Bartimaeus to verbalize. He needed Bartimaeus to say, this is what I need. And that's what he needs for us to do. He says, look, I need for you to, ver I need you that knowledge that this is what you need. I got it. I'm willing to give it to you. I just want to see if you're willing to take it, if you're willing to receive it. There are some people that they don't know how to receive gifts. They do not know how to receive gifts, including compliments. Somebody tell you, oh, you, know, you look nice. Well, you know, this is just something I threw up. You ain't got to tell everybody that. You just, Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, that uh, sometimes I tell people I do the best that I can. And so he needed Bartimaeus to verbalize, okay? In the same verse, Rabbi, he, he, he done made this thing real serious. Now, he said, Lord, I, the blind man said to him, I want to see. Although he didn't have any physical sight, Joker knew who Jesus was spiritually. He said, I recognize who you are. They may not recognize who you are, but Jesus, I recognize who you are. Okay? He said, Rabbi, I, Lord, I, I'm not just greeting you as just a sir. No, I'm greeting you as master. I want to see. I want to be able to see. I want to see. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has saved you, made you whole. Immediately he could see and he began to follow Jesus on the road. He began to follow Jesus in the way. His praise came from an act of faith that Jesus is able to do anything. I praise with an expectation. And then after I receive what I expected, I'm going to follow Jesus all of the way. Bartimaeus said, you hear me? I can walk with you now. I can walk. I, look, what, let me walk with you so that when they need to see some evidence of what you're able to do, tell them, send them on over here. Send them to my office. Let me tell them how bad you are. Go to me, y'all. I'm done. That, that's the end of it right there. Praise God's people offer praise. God's people offer praise. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Next week, we're going to move on to another unit. I'm not going to do uh, the, the unit that we had actually done in Sunday school because I have all, I've, I've literally already preached. And, and taught that particular scripture came from Acts chapter 2, uh, you know, talking about them receiving salvation after Peter uh, received or, and preached unto them, okay? So we'll move to a new um, a theme, new theme on next week, and I pray you'll be able to join the first Wednesday of October. Oh my gracious, can y'all believe how fast time is moving. I pray you'll join us this coming Sunday, uh, first Sunday, 1045 online worship. We have not determined whether we'll have in-person worship as of yet, but I will, uh, I'll, I'll do a video announcement like I did a couple of weeks ago and let you know if we're going to do in-person worship on this coming Sunday or not. But I pray you'll join us online even if we don't uh, have in-person worship, we'll still have online worship for, for you and available. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your word that, Lord, we ought to offer up praise unto you. Lord, we ought to offer up sacrifices of praise that, God, we have seen through the example of Moses singing the song, the Israelites being delivered out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, God, that David danced before the Lord and blind Bartimaeus said, I just want to see. And 
And I will give your name praise because you are some kind of good. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. We magnify you and we lift you up. Keep us safe, God. Continue to keep us healed. In Jesus' name we pray and got every single thing done. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised.